elders or, or, or the chief of this society in the German period would do uh, if he suddenly discovered that these folks were living so long that they had to get 42% of the parts from the, the uh, employed folks as against 20% of years ago. And we know what he did. He would pick out the able body the most to, to retire and send it back out of his car fit. That's what he did. Uh, and that uh, has the advantage, that, that way of looking at it, has the advantage of taking away the, the veil of finance. Uh, and and uh, um, I challenge you to uh, work out some improvement in rates of return uh, or rates of growth in the tax base in case of unfunded schemes uh, that is big enough to, to make a difference and is also plausible. Um, so I want to show you some um, recent developments in life expectancy in Ireland. Uh, that's a chart which shows uh, male and female life expectancy at age zero. On top, males being purple, uh, and life expectancy at age 65 uh, underneath, with the males being purple. And it comes a little bit clearer. This, this is the table of the same table. Uh, so let's just look at what's happened. And these are the Irish life tables, which are actually uh, uh, over three years, but I've just centered them on the census years. And what do they show? For males, there's been a steady improvement all the way through, really, in life expectancy at age zero. which has gone from 57 to 77. Period, the 80 years since 1926. Um, and females, uh, there's been a, a females weren't that far ahead of males back in 1926 in terms of life expectancy at age zero, but they are now. Uh, but look what's happened at age 65, which is what matters for uh, uh, the kind of pension schemes that we've designed for ourselves. Uh, nothing happened for males, and males is what kind of mattered until relatively recently because it's principally males that accumulate pension entitlements. That's changed. Um, but look, look what happens in male life expectancy at 65. Nothing happened to it until 1986. It started off at 12.8 and filled around a little bit, and it was 12.6 in 1986. But since then, it's been about four years uh, in, the, in, in the 20 years since 1986. So it's gone from 12.6 out to 16.6. Uh, and of course, the dot 4 as a percentage of 12.6 uh, is just a huge increase in the burden that provided for these retired folks. And something similar has happened with females. Uh, there are lots more females nowadays, and we see that from the special figures in a minute, are accumulating entitlements to both funded and unfunded pension benefit. Uh, and not merely are there more and more females in the mix, which is good to <coughs> because the participation has gone up, uh, but there's more and more of them, and of course they live on it. So, so you're now getting more folks into the mix who are on the same kind of fixed retirement ages, uh, but we're going to hang around a little bit longer. Uh, so <laughs> the, uh, the, the situation is going to get worse because uh, in the pension green paper, and it's only happened to stop it, but in the pension green paper, they reckon uh, that maybe the, the uh, male life expectancy at age 65 uh, could add another five or six years in the next few. Uh, okay, that's finger in the air stuff, uh, but that's the kind of figure that we're talking about. Um, in Ireland, if you just focus on the state scheme, the age at which you qualified was 70 years of age back in the mid 70s. I mean, you, you probably remember it's, it had been seven years ago. I didn't qualify for it. I know <laughs> <laughs> it was changed uh, and reduced, and now it's 66, apart from the retirement benefit, which is a you know, transition thing. So it's been cut from 70 to 66, uh, and one of the, uh, at a time when life expectancy was gone in the opposite direction by four years. Uh, it looks as if life expectancy, if you believe, is something to live. The has been made, it's going to continue rising, uh, unless we get sufficient of peace, and we start smoking again. Um, and um, uh, 
some incentives happen for, for payments, but we've cut the pension age from 7 to 66. One of the scenarios of the green paper was, okay, this is unsustainable, uh, the, the implications for future tax rates are going to be uh, unfunded schemes, or the implications for contribution rates for funded schemes, which are much smaller, uh, are horrendous, so we better put up a term page. And they did a little scenario which says, why don't we add a year, and let's try to get back to where we were, uh, add a year of decades. So we moved from 667 in the first decade, then 68. So that by the year 2050, we've got the pension back up to 70. Uh, but of course, by the time we get there, life expectancy uh, would, for males, would be eight or nine years ahead of where it was the last time it was set. Uh, so so uh, adding a year, if that's all you can do, once every decade, uh, is just probably not going to be enough. Um, <coughs> and this is further than you went through. In Ireland and in the UK, the population of very elderly people has risen even more. And if you look at the way that chart forms a lot of it rises, this is just the raw number of, of, of folks that is over the five. It's really rocket. It's actually nearly doubled in the last 20 years. So the, the, the actuaries go on endlessly about this and the photographers. It's not just the, the life expectancy at age, say 65. Uh, it's also this uh, increasing, you know, even more rapidly increasing of the very who of course place extra strain on, um, uh, on health care and, 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 and uh, such like systems. So what do we need to do about all this? Well, it's clear that the viability of these schemes are either funded or unfunded. Uh, it's going to require either uh, increased taxes, uh, sharply increased contribution to funded schemes, or lower pensions, or an increase in return uh, and uh, it, it's got to be one of these. Uh, and these figures <laughs> show, um, I'll skip that, uh, <coughs> I can't, I can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Show later for participation rates, and, and very quickly, uh, what's been happening? Uh, it would be nice if we were beginning to see an increase in participation rates in the older age groups, but we're not really. If you look at the males, the, the, the look at 60, 64, uh, and the numbers go male to female, male to female, back for 20 years. Uh, so the first one is made 60.7 percent were in the labour force back in the year. It's now 60.3. It has gone up though. It slipped down, went 60, 54, 52, 55, 60. <coughs> uh, in, in the 65 plus age group, it's 18, 15, 15, 40, and it's 60. So it has turned uh, in the last five years. These are pure and age groups, uh, up to the most recent groups. Uh, for women, uh, there's been a big increase in participation at virtually all age groups. Uh, and you can see a kind of a cohort effect. Female participation is catching up with male participation in the middle age groups. And you can think of it, I think of it as a kind of a wave that's moving right towards through the age groups. Because younger women have more education attainment and have fewer kids and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so you, you, you would probably expect that female participation uh, in, in the 60 plus age groups will, will rise a little bit uh, over the next few years as the relevant cohorts uh, age them are true, but of course they're accumulating entitlements to return vision as well. Uh, so not enough has happened, it seems to me, to retirement ages to rescue the situation that we're talking about. So I think one of the implications is the state pension ages have too low to be sustainable. Uh, contribution to private funds.